Welcome to DLab everybody. In this video, we are going to cover basic setup and operation of an oscilloscope for tracing a tube amplifier. I'm not going to get into troubleshooting. I'm going to show you the basic setup, the typical scope, how to connect to your amp, and we'll walk through some test points and trace some audio. So for this demonstration, we're going to be tracing a signal through a typical Fender 5F1 circuit. So here's our amp under test. We have a dummy load. We're going to use a looper for the input and monitor on a leader LBO 513A single channel 15 megahertz scope. So here's the star of the show. An old CRT type analog oscilloscope. You don't need to be an expert to use a scope. You'll find that it is the most valuable instrument on the bench. You don't need an expensive scope for audio work. In this case, I have a 15 megahertz scope, but you can find these cheap online. I recommend Leaders, B&K, Watsu, Tektronics, and yeah, Gold Stars. Heathkit scopes are okay, but ensure that they were factory built. Steer clear of these new LCD screen digital type scopes as the signal lags. In this demo, I'll be showing the scope setup basic signal tracing, no troubleshooting. That's going to be in a future video. All right, let's talk about safety. Ensure that the amp is properly fused or use an external variac supply. Always use a quality probe when testing. Never use a bare wire or a clip lead because you can easily contact adjacent wires damaging the amp scope or maybe even you. Use a ground adapter on your scope's AC. The reason is, if the amp has a hot chassis or there's a malfunction putting power on that chassis, it's going to seek ground through your scope probe, eventually smoking that or burning up the input to your scope. And here is a very important tip. Ensure that the item you're testing does not exceed the voltage rating on your scope probe or vertical input. In this case, the scope is rated for 600 volts max. This probe is a category one 300 volt. If you get across voltage higher than that, I've seen these probes go up in a ball of smoke and it can burn out the attenuator in your oscilloscope and then it's trash. So as I stated earlier, you do not have to be an expert to operate an oscilloscope. Let's go through a basic setup for troubleshooting an amp. So scope control is vertical. We're going to set it 5 volts. Mode is going to be at auto. Horizontal time, we're going to put at 1 millisecond. And most importantly, your coupling for your probe needs to be set at AC. So next, you want to verify the operation of your scope probe. You can either use the cal test point on the scope or simply touch the tip with your finger. Last very important tip make sure that the amp that you're testing is not on a conductive surface. Otherwise, if there's leakage, it'll come across the bench and bite you. For the following test points, I'll post a diagram. You guys can use that as we go through the 5F1 circuit. Right now, I'm at test point one. The amp is not powered up. I'm simply looking at the source coming in to pin two of the 12AX7. So in this case, I'm seeing about 100 millivolts peak. If you use an audio generator, I would not exceed 200 millivolts. So we have a signal making it into the amp. Let's go to test point two. So I've moved my scope probe to test point two, and this is still the first trial, but now we're looking at the amplified output, okay? So if I go down a volt, you see we got a little bit more amplitude than we did on the input. Now, word of caution. You want to connect to the side of the cap that's going to the volume control. You do not want to connect to pin one. There's about 180 volts DC there. Always go to the side of the cap. That is the signal side. All right, let's go to test point three. All right, now test point three. This is the second triode, so we're gonna have more output. See, your scope went off scale, so we can turn that down. You can see we have a lot more gain now, and that is feeding the grid of the 6V6. So now we know that our input came in, we got through the first triode, now we're through the second triode of the 12AX7, and now we're in the grid of the 6V6. 
Let's go to test point four. All right, now we're gonna to connect to test point four, and that is the high side of the 470 ohm cathode resistor. You see we have audio there. I'm gonna to have to bring my amplitude down so we can see it. But what this is doing is showing you that the 6V6 tube is actually conducting current. Because if you have audio there, as it conducts, it's going through the primary of the output transformer. So that verifies that the output transformer is good. Once again, you do not want to connect your probe to pin 3, which is the primary of that output transformer because there's high voltage there. We're following the signal path. Let's go to the last test point. All right, final test point is 5, and that is right on the speaker jack itself. You can see we had quite a bit of gain. I can actually turn that down with the volume control. Okay. So now that is verifying that our signal is getting through the secondary of the output transformer, which would feed your load. In this case, it's a dummy load, but it would be your speaker. In other words, this amp is working. So there you go, guys. Simple oscilloscope setup and signal tracing of a common amplifier circuit. So in conclusion, don't be afraid of an oscilloscope. They've been around repair shops for years. The advantage is, is you get to see what's going on in that circuit rather than sitting back and saying, well, I think the amp sounds good. You don't want to kick out repairs saying, I think your amp sounds good. This is a way to prove that it sounds good, which is better for your shop's reputation.